Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to your reading. Let me close this up. Okay, let's go in share screen. One second, actually. Okay. All right, let's, let's do No. Ah. Okay. We have here back to back Aries suns, moon, and jump Pluto or Saturn. Excuse me, Scorpio moon. All right, just like this cat, <laughs> Aries sun, Scorpio moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously, you know, when you have that combo, um, just read it. Gotcha. Yeah, so um, let me go ahead and. All right, so, 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 Pluto and Saturn conjunct Moon. So, um, <clears throat> nodes north in 12th in Gemini. South and Sag conjunct Neptune. Mm. Expects the moon conjunctions. Mars opposite Pluto, Mars opposite Saturn. Okay, so Saturn and Mars is also. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. It hasn't changed. Okay, let me see. All right. So, um, Cancer rising. All right. So, <clears throat> your chart is ruled by the moon as a Cancer rising. Um, well, first, just 
kind of you know interesting thing when you have an you know when you're an Aries sun, Scorpio moon, Cancer rising. I always I see I see charts like that a good amount. I always think that you know well there's lots of things here. Um, I, I think that the big three is like an egg, um, the shell, you know what people see out of personality, the vehicle through which you navigate life is cancer and then the the white is the sun who you you know core kind of core individuality identity um sport uh, aries and then the mood moon you know the internal the yoke is the wonderful intense scorpio so tons of Marsh, Martian intensity, right? Um, you know, when you have that combination, there's no bullshit. It's, it's raw, it's real, you know, trauma i guess you can say like gener like different cycles um that have been in the family for you know who knows how long and basically you know it's your job to you know you're you're here in large part to um really affect those positively so um Oftentimes when I see that, right, there is, so, the, you know, the moon and the moon, which I don't necessarily like through my own experience with clients and just overall, some people are like, the moon is always the mother. For me, it hasn't really shown up that way. Um, more, more accurately. To me, it's like on a psychological level, the moon is your internal unconscious emotions, right? So in Scorpio, especially with Pluto there and Saturn there, oftentimes there is, if it's not early trauma, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's some heavy karma. A lot of times it is passed on from the mother. Um, but regardless, it is something that in the family dynamic, in the family, in the family, um, John Lyon, it's something that's often taken in the family. It's something that is, you know, passed on, right? So, so that represents what I'm trying to do, right? It's just like where that is. Um, tendencies, you know, or you know, a healed, a healed version of that. Someone who usually early on, right, through these real internal, internal, um, kind of, it, it, it's like different events and the karma pushes one to their internal. I guess you could say like 
underground. I like to think of it like if we're a house, it's like the basement that no one, like dark basement no one wants to go into. But in order to have a clean house, that basement has to be put in order. Or it's like that closet in your room that is dirty and it still affects the energy of the room. Um, and then everything in the closet has to be put in order. So oftentimes what happens is that people with Hades moons, they get thrown, they, they have things happen and a lot of times adverse childhood experiences early on. And they're in this position where they really have to grow up fast. And is your Chiron going to be in a sign that is well, like Leo or something? course so funny last time i i i said that i, mean, I think i said the same thing i think that's last time i guess incorrectly is a course too um but yeah so what well, makes sense actually because saturn and pluto are on your um your moon right so speak to people each of them um and saturn's closer but basically like with both of those combinations like i would i would guess right, that the mother, most likely, was either, you know, very, there's, there's a level of, like, strictness and crisis, potentially, maybe going on in her life, maybe at the time of your birth, there was something that was, um, you know, very difficult, and there's energy, right, that gets passed on from generation to generation, um, and the person with the Hades moon because they, they kind of get thrown into it and they, on a soul level, they choose that they want to, you know, that they want to be the ones to kind of break this. So it's like, a, you're a hero for, for that. You know, it's like, it's like, it's not an easy task. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so it basically, it's like a Scorpio moon on steroids, right? And the, the decision is ultimately to, um, to really accept whatever it is that's coming and the different waves that life throws at you, right? Um, and just to just let go, essentially, right? To just, to just um, really learn to flow with life and to just take everything as, as um, you know, it's an experience and Every 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 everything that happens, you know, has a has a deeper meaning, it has it has a purpose, it has a lesson. And I think Hades moon people, Scorpio moons, and you know, with Pluto and Saturn, like like that's not easy, right? Because Saturn on the moon can can cause uh, on a psychological level can cause potential for depression, you know, for for for, for depressed mood. Um, and feeling held back in terms of emotional vulnerability. It can really make it hard for someone to trust, especially the Scorpio moon already. There is that, you know, a lot of times there is a certain cynicism, right? And I'm not speaking to you, to you now. I'm speaking to the, the chart, right? I, I read it based on, um, you know, where, like, just of all the probabilities, your free will ultimately is going to be the determining factor here um but you know with with the with the with the hades moon it really and you know it really it really pushes one towards um towards this death death rebirth transformation this need to kind of let go and i always tell people with that you know to not like to really really like look into yourself and see and feel you know what with any like you know anything like that there, there there is a lot of times a lot that that the individual is, is carrying that's not theirs right so it could be shame guilt um even a, a certain sadness right and um I, I you know an exercise is to really really think about you know what have you taken from mom what have you taken from dad and 
to see, you know, in, in what, what is mine, right? What, what is mine? But, um, you know, the difficulty <clears throat> is that Saturn, so, so Pluto with the moon can create a very, in the Scorpio, it can, it can create like a, a very, it's, it's a very intense inner life, right? Usually there's lots of ups and downs. Um, and Saturn adds to that by, you know, you, so usually the mother, like, like a lot with Pluto, it can be like the mother was very, very um, overly protective, um, just dominant sometimes. And Saturn, a lot of times there, there is some kind of uh, coldness, right? And like I said to you before, I, I like to think of it less as individual parents and more as like the upbringing, the emotional development. And um, so, so, so with, with, um, you know, with that, it, it makes one with a scorpion moon, they already feel things very, very deeply, right? And I guess, kind of actually going back to what I was saying before, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that before I fold in this, because I didn't finish my, my statement before about the big three. Um, what I've noticed is that there is a certain, so there's a good, a good part about you being cancer rising, um, because, so you have this real intensity, right, with the egg metaphor, sorry, I didn't finish my statement there. Um, so because cancer is water and it trines your moon, right? Um, your scorpion moon, which is water too, there is a certain element of like this, like the cancer rising person comes off very, very, very familial. Like people, like, like I think it's a really nice rising sign because it's, it gives a vibe of, of real tranquility. So like, even though you have this really intense energy, you know, people will see that more when they really get to know you better. Cancer moon, it does make someone a lot more approachable. Um, but, you know, there is definitely a certain amount of moodiness that comes from that. But usually the Cancer Moon, um, I think, you know, with Aries and Scorpio, these two intense signs for your sun, your moon, um, it will mask, mask some of that a little bit, right? As opposed to, let's say, if you had like a, a Scorpio rising also, um, it'd be harder for people to feel like they can approach you and, and um, you know, you still emanate this, this, this really like deep, power and um you know this determination and this intensity but the fact that your moon is trying your senate means that there isn't this big big um difference between the way that you come off and kind of your personality the way you show yourself in life and your true inner core right so does that make sense so like for example let's say that you're if you if you have like your moon in, in Scorpio and then your ascendant is in Leo, right? It's a good example. People, you'll come off in that kind of Leo rising type way, right? But then it won't match your moon at all, which can cause issues. So when the ascendant is a, a good match with the moon, um, even though it's square of the sun, like there still isn't like this massive, massive surprise. And at the same time, it does cancer a way more tame sign than Scorpio, right? It's a way more chill sign, you could say. So, um, but then with the Aries, you know, that's obviously like the fire, most dominant, just like very, very assertive energy. <clears throat> so I think that <clears throat> there's, there's kind of that duality of feminine and masculine that you probably emanate. And then when people get to know you, it's like, that 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 scorpion moon is really like the emotional need of scorpion moon is to be able to express its emotions and its depth and not be judged judged for it. Um, they want to be able to say anything, like the like they want to be able to say anything, um, and be able to go to go really deep. It's very non superficial, and um, it it wants to it wants to evolve. So it doesn't really, it usually doesn't have much much time. For, for kind of stupid shit, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, so 
so back to what I was saying before, you know, just feeling things so deeply, right? It can, like, um, there's certain times in life where the person with this decides whether they want to um, just kind of uh, accept and just go with the flow <clears throat> and feel the emotions and kind of um, take 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 life's lessons, right? And find and, and find because it comes down to resources, right? The so Scorpio Moon, it's like how can I find how how can I shed what, what's no longer needed and allow myself to be reborn on a on an unconscious kind of internal emotional um, level and not have to hang on to anything really, really, let's say negative that happened early on. So big part of that is about forgiveness and self-compassion. And as you mature in your life and you move into new stages, being able to understand, like, for example, like, let's say there's a resentment towards someone, that that is ultimately something that's making you sick. But they say resentments are like um, uh, drinking poison and hoping that someone else gets sick from it, right? So it really kind of pushes one to create this sort of list or this this internal list or just this this real log of people and situations and just uh, events and all that in their life and to kind of heal each one individually like on an energetic level to truly look at it what happens when people and this is why i wrote an article not too long ago about you know the difficulty for men with scorpio and capricorn moons and why I said just more more with men, even though it can be difficult for any, is that women or girls when they're when they're coming up, they usually have friendships where they're able to speak socially. You know, it's it's more, um, you know, like a guy a guy with Scorpio Moon might hold in all of this stuff really intensely, right? Not speak about the emotions and all that, and then it could just turn into the low level of Scorpio, which is the controlling and always challenging and. Uh, like throwing their their extreme moods onto onto other people and um, projection, all that stuff. Like just you know, so it does bring a very 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 powerful intuition. This uh, right, very powerful intuition and ability to to really like uh, have a deep purpose in their life and a deep deep emotional resources. Like you're the kind of person that's so tough that nothing can ever fully take you down. You know, like you can get down, but you get back up, right? Um, it's this real powerful energy. It's Aries and Scorpio together is so powerful. And um, yeah, so, but it's it's understanding that like the, the moods, right? And when we look at your chart, we see so you have a little bit of Earth, um, <laughs> Venus, um, and then air, I don't know. Yeah, so there's not much air, there's not much, there's not much earth. Um, you know, you have a nice Venus and Taurus, which is, is good. We can lean into that. But um, you know, that that you know, lacking air can can make it first of all, one one little like life hack is doing breath work and really getting into like going hiking and get, getting into nature and really get, feeling op, like getting good oxygen and and um, you know, stuff like that. And and really grounding your energy is so important. To, to have like a good consistent routine and it doesn't have to be you know and we'll get into that in a little bit like it doesn't have to be the typical because i see your sixth house you have a lot of what i have there right um but just it, it should work for you you know and, and give you tons of make you really feel a lot of freedom in your day to day so besides that um People with, with Hades moons, they can have this very, and like I said, yours is like just on the edge. Like I would say like if it was 27 Pluto, like you, may, you maybe don't count it. So it's not going to be as intense as it would be if it was right on the moon. And it's in a different sign, but for Pluto doesn't matter that much. But um, yeah, just this real, it can make people like, they really have to get into their unconscious because their unconscious reactions can can. And they can get triggered. It can make someone get triggered pretty fast. And then boom, like the Aries sun, which can be very impulsive, can just like react. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, so with your North Node in the 12th house, you're here to really, really, your, your journey is very spiritual. And it's very, it's very much about um, integration of the lower mind and the higher mind. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, when I when I think of, of of that, I think of like also how in this life you're you're really trying to be able to have this deep spiritual relationship with yourself, and you're you're, you're trying to also maybe be someone who can create human language around the the uh, subjects that don't have words. Um, so it really is this service. It's about service a lot too. Twelve Paths is, is really the service, and you know, through, through your, your, um, you know, let, let's say like that, the time of your life, because it's, it's a Hades moon, like it's it just someone with Scorpio moon in general, like uh, I think water moons tend to really want to look at life and, and really be, you know, they can be quite introverted, not all the time, obviously it's in the areas, but they want to be able to have alone time where they can really feel into things and, um, have this kind of introspective worldview, right? Especially with your Jupiter on Antares in, uh, in, in retrograde in, in Sag, it's, it's just like this very internal philosopher, right? Like someone who's a, a deeply philosophical on an internal level. <clears throat> um, you can have like very, very, like almost like psychic visions, like your dreams are super profound and um, teach you a lot. But you know the big thing here is is um, just the fact, like I said, that, that, that people with this tend to have little control over their unconscious, their subconscious, and have very strong subconscious re reactions. So um, it's really you know like in those dark moods and those dark times, there can be this deep fear, and, and it can almost feel like someone's taken over, um, and um, the whole thing, you know, like I said, like like manipulation and uh, emotional manipulation, right? Um, that could have been something that came from growing up, right? Usually it's the mom, like I said, but so like if the mom was kind of overbearing and manipulative and controlling all that stuff, um, it's it's um, it's really about like undoing that that brainwashing. It's like it's like reconditioning the 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 inner self, right? And that's like the major priority. And that's why people with this, um, they tend to really feel it early. So usually there's not the easiest childhood, but it's because it's like, okay, we're going to give it like the soul when you come in this world, it's like you, you, you know, your, 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 your astrology represents what you decided you wanted to uh, undertake in this lifetime. Right. And that in itself, that realization and really being able to feel into that is, is so massive, right. Because it just shows that, um, you know, you, nothing, everything that you've taken on is something that you can control or something, something that you can handle. So, you know, the, the great thing here is that, um, there's a ton, like I said, of, of, of willpower and, and, um, power here. And it's just about understanding that power, real power is, is comes from your, your your um, your vic your internal victories and the increased awareness and realizing like you know this is what I have to deal with I chose this not playing victim not not running away because the cancer rising sometimes can do like the whole crab into the shell type thing you know like when when they've been hurt or, or um, you know like kind of hiding and, and hermiting too much so you know it's very common like you know, for people with that to, to, you know, to really get into like psychology and, and, or, you know, do, do therapy or do some, some very deep healing work. And then a lot of times, and it's all about like finding those like deeply buried memories and feelings. And, you know, it could be astrology. Also meditation is huge. Um, and just, it's, it's all about transforming, right? Um, because then once you find, so this is the real power, this is the big thing, right? Is that once you find that, okay, wow, have all these deep resources and you kind of go into your um, unconscious and realize that what you know maybe really really troubled you at the start of your life you're able to flip that around and it's also about not being so hard on yourself you know because uh, not, not that you're hard on yourself i'm just saying that there's times where it's easier than others right it, it's it, it's ebbs and flows and also this, as a cancer rising it'd be very mindful of the lunar cycle right because uh Cancer rules by the moon, so you'll feel this more intensity around the full moons and 
um, times, you know, like maybe like when, you know, um, maybe for you, it's when Mins and Libra, perhaps if it goes over that Pluto and Mins and Scorpio for you, for sure, and the lunar return, you know, each month must be intense. So then we talk about the Saturn, right? Um, it just, it, it can bring like melancholy, right? Like sadness, guilt, and just like emotional hardship. Um, so it, it makes it harder if, you know, either parent, especially the mother, had that kind of cold, Saturnian kind of coldness and almost like apathy sometimes, right? That feels like indifference, um, if, if that was something. So it, it just makes it so like already like a Scorpio moon, a lot of times it's like, they really have to like work on that root chakra and on that, you know, just that energy of feeling grounded in the world, right? And feeling like the world is safe because a lot of times they didn't feel that. There could be even some perinatal trauma. Um, and, you know, that, that like if, if, if someone doesn't have their, you know, the very root, you know, if they don't have, um, if, if things don't feel safe, then it's very hard to, to get out of those, those lower chakras, right? So it's really about this continuous work. And of course, you know, you pass your Saturn return. So the Saturn with the moon would have, um, you know, become most likely a lot easier after the Saturn return. And, you know, Saturn also opposes Mars. So that is a lot of success, very successful people actually have that. Um, like Mars square, Saturn, Mars conjunct Saturn, Mars opposite Saturn. And it's because it makes like the first three years, like you feel like you're taking three steps forward and the universe does some fuck shit that sends you four steps back, you know, or you take four steps forward and three steps back. But then after the Saturn turn, things get easier in the sense that you don't feel like the universe is just messing with you. Like, um, and you have this like very hard work ethic and determination that's built. But yeah, um, it's all about like building this real emotional security within yourself. Um, and uh, one of the best ways you, people can do that with charts like this is to feel, to feel, to, to do, be doing something with their life where they feel needed. And now you have that, you see 10th house done. And that mean, that means that your, your Dharma, your career, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, it is very, very important to your life. And your midheaven is actually exactly my son. <laughs> Interesting. And Neptune. So that means Neptune is currently on that. That's a different reading, uh, which you can, you can uh, I'll, I'll tell you about it later, but that's usually the, the next one people do is they, they do the follow-up um, with the current astrology. But, you know, so with your, with Nep you know, your, your midheaven ruled by Neptune, I imagine right now is a time where, you know, your Dharma, you know, maybe there's like a lot, a big, a big desire to, um, really, really follow a life path that's related to helping others and compassion. Um, but, you know, there, it could also be the case, you know, in midheaven in Pisces like that, that there's this, because you have, you have Neptune on your south node, right? Which means that there's like a past life mysticism and it's about unlocking that in this lifetime. But what's blocking, what can block that is this. Um, and this can also, like I said, you can go, that's why Scorpio, there's the high versus low. Scorpio is such a massive, ex extreme, like such an extreme difference because low Scorpio can be like the worst, like just um, and worse in the sense of like, like power obsessed, ego. So it's really about ego versus soul. This is Pluto, Scorpio, Pluto, right? Ego versus soul. What does the soul need? What does the ego want? The ego wants to control. The ego wants to win. The ego wants to be number one. The ego wants to defeat others. The ego wants payback. The soul wants peace. The soul wants growth, right? So these are these are these are some themes. So yeah, with the, with the moon Saturn, people like you know grow up quickly. They're pushed to grow up quickly. Um, like I said, you know they really want to feel needed and valued. So like their work, that's like one of the best ways they can do that is they you know people with a chart like this. This is why so many healers I see with similar things or aspects like this is that they, they, they really go through early and they, they really have to learn, you know, through their own healing, how to heal themselves. And then that gives them the resources to heal others. Even if you, you know, I get it. Like, trust me, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm never fully myself. Like I, I, I'm an astrologer. I'm not, I'm not healed fully. You know, I'm still a human. Um, I'm not, I would never ever try to act like I'm some perfectly healed person. Right. So it's like, 
because I, I feel like a lot of people who are meant for healing um sometimes they think like you know like i i can't do it because like i'm like i'm fucked up or something you know but really like um i think that you know someone with a chart like yours has so much to offer and the in the midheaven and, and immutable pisces can go through many career changes many different ideas of like different times where it's meant to do something but overall i think that it you know like i said 10th house um sun is like the they're really meant to shine in career in, in, in their in their dharma in their life mission which isn't just career i want to be quite clear um so yeah a lot of people with this they felt very alone when young um and they can just have like be kind of hermit sometimes and just being really really hard on themselves um and be very shy there can be like a, issues with self-respect which is shown by like the chiron and taurus you know like so self-esteem can be hard difficult but then having venus there and taurus is, is helping that right <clears throat> but it's all about you know leaving the comfort zone right that's that's really what pluto moon scorpio moon is asking you to do is opening asking you to, to to leave the comfort zone and to to really go out and try things that feel uncomfortable and um you know just reprogramming the mind right um and really really like using mindfulness to really look at like okay when am i being too too hard on myself and um just it it pushes one to to hard work one of the biggest things for saturn moon people is showing their emotions you know being able to like actually like um like speak to people about their deep emotions and that's kind of one of the needs of the scorpio moon also right uh, and that can really turn isolation into, this, into companionship and depression into satisfaction, right? Um, and it's also really good for for um, you know for 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 raising children. And you have the fifth house moon, so maybe there is something a big part of your life. Maybe is children if you have them. Um, perhaps you know fifth house Saturn can push that to being you know after the Saturn return. Um, so after like you know thirty ish, but yeah. So um, let's see. So as I was saying, you know, um, Neptune. I can't wait. Really. Okay, so Neptune, you know, like I said, on the south node, 20 degrees, you know, that's some, some very high spiritual energy. Um, but there can also be a past life tendency to sort of daydream. And um, <clears throat> it's like really important to, to, to really surround yourself with positive people, people that, because uh, you, you take in a lot of the energy, right? Um, as a Scorpio moon as well. And, um, spiritual protection is very very important and it's important not to you know escape like to have negative types of escapism right because it can be you know it, it's just it's just um you know it, it's it's not it's not good for south node neptune people and it's really about putting your intuition um and all these like you know creative talents that you have like these mystical creative talents that you have from past lives you brought into this life um <clears throat> into something that's either artistic spiritual you know healing or, or in, into like some some type of like work that's helping other people in a compassionate in a compassionate way <clears throat> but you know i always say that you have to you know the, they're, they're like muscles or like parts of our, our being that we have to uncover right <clears throat> excuse me so uh, I think also potential, like potentially, like is a is a fifth house moon. There can definitely be like a a, a desire to really want to create, to really this emotional need for creativity. But then when you have Saturn there, it can make it can really frustrate that. It can make it it can, it can make it really feel really hard to feel because there's also an emotional need to be the inner child to express the inner child, which is to me it's just like sometimes Scorpio moons <clears throat> there can be like a almost like an over seriousness and. Saturn there, fifth house can kind of make it difficult to let go and to, to just let go and have fun and just go with the flow, you know? Um, 
so like with partnership and friends, I think people who, you know, A, you can be very, very like not, they're not judging you like for, for, for any kind of moods and you can really like be very deep with them. Um, because like at the end of the day, yeah. Um, Saturn with moon, like, like when that really integrates, that makes someone who's very, very like emotionally solid, you know, and who's very, very full of honor. But yeah, as I was saying, also p- people who are, you know, who can be fun and serious, you know, who can have a sense of humor about life, but also, um, you know, are just messing around. Um, so, yeah, so I could see how, like, I'm, I'm curious how, how life changed after the Saturn return, because I imagine that a lot opened up, and um, I just think that, like, being creative and being, like, authentic self-expression is so important for you, so the idea of, say, let's say you're, 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 you're an artist, right? Or you, I don't even like to use those words because like in today's age, it's like, there's people who, um, they only want to create if they're getting likes or views, you know, but it's like the idea of, of, um, mosquito. it's the idea of, let's say you're writing a poem for the sake of writing the poem. Um, you have not even like needing to get any like external validation for it um and growing through that creative process whatever it is you know having a creative outlet is super important for a chart like this right now yeah so you know the the tenth house and the fifth house like the leo house in the in the, in the capricorn house it's just like the idea of perhaps find you know turning what you do for fun into what you do into what you do for a living um and being able to really like, you know, through through your work in some way, really like, it, it, it makes you feel like more energetically open and it heals you, the work that, that you know, the work that you might do. Um, and if that's not the case, I understand, you know, different people have different, different careers and jobs, right? It doesn't have to be like that. You know, it can just be in your everyday life when the opportunities come up or <clears throat> joining a group of some sort of like, you know, something, something that's kind of like in line with, with, with healing. But I think that, um, you know, Chiron the 11th, Venus 11th, it's like, you're, you're going to want to really feel <clears throat> a sense of groundedness with your friends and with the pe- people around you. Maybe it's other, you know, people who are healers or healer types um, that would be good mixes for you. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, so kind of with all the nodal stuff, let's see. Turn. So what's interesting is that the midheaven is squaring the nodes. And um, I think what, what that's speaking to is that your, so, so your north node, right, 12th house, it's it's really about like a, it's like a, a karmic quest for you for you to feel yourself as a part of the greater whole it's almost like enlightenment type energy like in this i don't like that word but it's like really like being able to like really feel like through increasing your consciousness increasing your awareness to really feel divine presence and really feel like how you know the connection with with, with all that is right um so really, it's it's about learning um, mind over matter, and 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 um, you know just like really really trans trans transforming the self, and um, you know moving into a state of spiritual unity. And you know when you lack air, it can be difficult to see things from you know different people's point of view, and communication can be difficult, right? So it's like also a, a quest to get good at low level communication because you have the sad south node so you are like like the passive energy is very good for the higher kind of truths but um you know going out and, and having the kind of more baseline communications with people and exploring um your immediate environment and touching base with people that and having kind of you know like like kind of branching out and taking social risks i think is very important 
And there can be like a tendency also to be a little bit scattered and restless. Um, so it's really about like learning focus as well, right? And being able to like really communicate your ideas in a way that um, that's effective and efficient and that, that, that really also uh, helps you get your ideas and your truth out, right? Because you have so much to share, you have so, so much depth, but lacking air can make it difficult um, to, to really get that out, I guess you could say. So, um, yeah, so like the 10th house, you know, being in Aries, I don't really need to go into the sun sign, but having your sun on the midheaven, um, I mean, it's it's close, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's like eight degrees, but um, yeah, like once again, like your 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 life goals, it's very, very, it's 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 like that's where you shine is 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 career dharma uh, you know whatever is your your <clears throat> your life path um you know making your mark on the world right um usually it's through the profession today's world that's not you know it could be it could also be something else but it's aries which is the pioneer the trailblazer right um so you know for a lot of people tend to have some people success tends to kind of, to, to come to come um when when they're really uh aligned with with what they really feel because like with midheaven and in in pisces i think that you know the fact that that your midheaven is ruled by neptune which is square your midheaven and conjunct yourself no i find that very interesting because i think that it speaks like a a, a needed realignment um of that spiritual unity and of that really real feeling like it's like you're meant like with Neptune the sixth, um, to like have spirituality be a part of your day to day life in some way, right? So if that's through the job, that's great. Compassion, spirituality, um, and you know that 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 kind of fixes it. But I think the square, um, you know, the square to me, and with the nodes involved, would speak to how the karmic goals might be a little bit at odds with the um the like i guess the dharma so there's a, there's a need to um you know to really and also like with the sun it's like to really find your own path and to find your own your own route right which is going to be it's like the hero's journey and it really speaks about how this lifetime is like the critical one and how you're you know it's it's going to be it's not going to be like mom it's not going to be like dad you're really like like I said, with the with the family, family stuff, you can really feel like you're the one who is taking a lot of the heat and who's who's really doing a lot of healing um, that maybe hasn't been done, right? Um, which can in itself be like a ton of work, right? So I think that with with Saturn on the moon, I think it's really important once again to have that self compassion and to you know understand that everything kind of comes in different ebbs and flows. And practice whether it's Buddhism type uh, practices around self compassion and and self love and um, just any any practices because you know, you have your Jupiter in Sag right so you you are this very philosophical person your South Moon's there right so it comes easy for, to you to understand these high abstract con concepts perhaps it's like you know the uh, what's the the saying. like um i can't remember how to say it. it's like you know the truth that's very obvious to you about things that matter might not be obvious to others and but it can be very frustrating when that's the case when you're like all these things make so much sense but then the, the idea of communicating them is tough you know and you do have some some very good gifts though because your mercury is trying jupiter and uranus and so is your sun <clears throat> jupiter and and uranus right so you know sun trying jupiter is great right because um it what well, yeah okay so sun trying jupiter is, is is an amazing aspect because it really makes one very very um it's it's good for popularity. It gives kind of a happy-go-lucky energy. Um, 
it makes it good. It's very good for, for success and luck. It just gives one like lots of, um, but there's, you have to watch out with that to not be <clears throat> self-indulgent and lazy and complacent, but usually it does provide lots of opportunities. Um, and it makes one like, you know, very, yeah, like very like open and, and philosophical, philosophical and they, they can kind of see like from the top of the, of the, of the summit, the whole big, you know, big picture. And it's so important is a Scorpio moon, right? The Scorpio moon, sometimes they can be stuck in the underworld. So it's about, that really definitely helps you see the larger perspective. And, um, you know, that same energy on your Mercury that creates, you know, the philosopher, right? Like once again, like the person who can see the big picture and actually, um, you know, when they're able to, to, to speak, they can speak, um, you know, speak in a way that really uplifts people and that's very positive and optimistic, even with the Scorpio moon that, like I said, can be cynical, but it's all about how much it's transformed, how much inner work's been done, how many, how much, um, you know, you know, the snake's skin has been shed. And, you know, Uranus on the sun, I love that, right? It's, it's 0 0.31, so it's very close. Um, I think it attracts people to your individuality. Um, Sometimes people struggle when they have like Uranus square sun because like people see them kind of as like a too much of a maverick, too much of a rebel. But it's like you're a rebel, <clears throat> but it's not, it's in a way that doesn't like piss people off, you know? Um, and people can kind of like respect your, I guess, the ways in which you're different. And then Mercury and Uranus is one of the genius aspects. Mercury trying Uranus uh, makes one think outside the box. And it really, really, they can be very, like, they can really see the future and, um, you know, have very original ideas and just a very original way of seeing life. And sometimes it's frustrating, though, because they, they can be, they can make one very, like, ahead of their time. If, if people are, like, like I said before, like, held back, it's, like, so annoying, right? Because you're, like, <laughs> like, you're seeing the world and you're just, like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess like also like on your sixth house, um, I think, so having Uranus in the sixth is very interesting because it makes one, <clears throat> I had it too, like the normal day-to-day -day routine, especially with Neptune there, like the nine to five kind of kind of work might just not work like for people to, like that it's usually pretty hard um they can really feel like just it can be just really difficult i don't know how, how to say it uh coping with everyday life you know um so being of service to others is like kind of the best way to go about it and uranus there's like an unusual approach to daily life right um now also pets, six thousand pets you have with my headaches. You can, you know, Jupiter there, you can really gain like like um pets can have a very like impactful um influence on you. But Jupiter six house, it just is actually really, really good because it's very good for health. Um and it just in the daily routine. It, it can make one like really want to like um take their personal beliefs and incorporate them into their daily work and it can really make one be able to truly expand a lot through their um their day-to-day -day work right and through their just day-to-day -day routine in general but it might not be how everyone else's is right so yeah um so yeah, Pluto in the fourth also like you know that that just would speak of like usually like uh it's close to the fifth but still like you know an uh usually quite volcanic early home environment um it can it can make uh just there can be like early childhood traumas that kind of are beneath the surface like kind of on the on the same thing I was saying with the Scorpio moon and. Yeah, it can just speak to just a lot that has to be un unpacked and healed from the childhood. Um,
Mm -hmm. But I think it's really through these like kind of dramatic and intense experiences that in through incorporating being able to still keep a certain lightness. That's how you your your doorway to higher awareness is really when you're able to um, face the intensity and still find that Jupiterian perspective and that well of optimism and, and, and you know, regardless of what happens, staying present and understanding how everything sort of fits into, you know, to, 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 to you know, to life and, and um, how each piece kind of plays its role. Um, so yeah, I think, I think the big, the, a lot of the healing is around, is, is usually going to be around self-confidence. Um, a lot of times with, with moon Saturn, there's like a lack of like, of like love and affection, warmth, you know, that, that, um, the parents, like I said, usually the mother, but it's not always that gay. Um, so it can kind of have like a lasting effect, but like it is different from person to person. Like, cause I'll do like readings for parents on their kids. Right. And, um, you know, like it's crazy when that, you know, when I do those, cause I'm able to kind of stop, I'm able to, to, to tell them, like, look, like, you know, they, 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 your kid has this aspect and, um, you know, it's really important for you to make an effort to give them a lot of attention and to give them a lot of love and so forth. So, you know, it's interesting when those happen, but I don't, you know, get that many of those. Once I advertise it, which I haven't in so long, or not advertise, make posts about it. But um, yeah, so looking forward, let's see. Is it Venus? Yeah, so, okay. So, okay, so that's a really, really intense one. So the Mars, um, Mars and Aries, right? So that is a strong, strong energy. Mars and Aries is the best place for a Mars. Mars is your assertiveness function. And, um, you know, Mars in Aries is warrior energy. Um, now, and this is kind of a theme in your chart, is that there's all of this beautiful, um, like, just, like, because when your Mars is aspected by Pluto, you are so, it, it makes so someone with such a powerful drive and ambition, but they're so often challenged by others. Cause like as an Aries Scorpio, for whatever reason, people can be jealous and they can, they can, they can try to kind of cut you off. Um, so there's a real like Mars and Aries, like those are the athletes, those are the warriors, right? And because your, your sun and your moon have that Mars rulership, you know, you know, in modern astrology, uh, Scorpio is with Pluto, it's still, you know, um, in dignity and, you know, Mars and dignity and Scorpio and Aries, and it funnels through this Mars and Aries. So you're going to be very, very headstrong, most likely, right? I think that the Cancer rising might <laughs> lead some people astray. You're not someone to be messed with. And I, ca I call it volcanic, right? It's this intense volcanic energy, um, and it needs a creative or physical outlet. person like for the unevolved person right aspect it's like every time they feel challenged they they take the bait right and it's very it's very impulsive which is like for a chart like yours like i i know i said this before but it's like after you know until you like it's really important to look at different things that happened early on 
when you were, you know, the less evolved version of yourself and to not have shame about them because all that shit was meant to happen, you know? Like, we all have situations. We all have things we did when we were younger, you know, that we have a feel like, that can come back to haunt us even later in life, right? Um, and it's important, the idea of mindfulness is like, and it's also like not perfectionism, right? Because it's like, you can't be perfectly mindful. There's always gonna be days that fucking suck. Um, but just like, cause like, they're, they're like, like, like just to not play victim is very important with this one too, right? Because, um, you know, it, it's like when, when, the, when those energies do come up to not feel into that in like a, in a way that's victim, victim-like and to, to just like also not to, and to just have compassion for the self, you know? So I think, you know, the idea of inner child work, right? Where you're connecting with yourself as, um, I know it's not the sexiest work, but, you know, this is just examples of things I can see that'd be beneficial. Connecting with the, the, the you know, the child version and, um, you know, sending it love, sending it care, stuff like that it can be really big for that. But anyways, besides that, with this, with this aspect, um, it's just, um, yeah, I mean, th this one, like Mars and Pluto, to be honest, like there can be like physical abuse. Um, it, it's a really, really tough one, um, you know, and it can make one really tough on themselves. Like, let's say someone was abused and they, then they, they kind of take it out of themselves. And like I said, it's very competitive, very high expectations of the self. Um, <clears throat> so super competitive. But, you know, a lot of times it is like an abusive or a dominant, you know, dominating parent. Um, and this a lot of times is Mars. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it could be a parent, teacher, someone, some, you know, someone who's not even related, like usually, usually it's a man. And it can continue into adulthood, like a pattern like that, um, you know, with superiors or people just in general. Um, and the the thing is to really, really look at the dynamic and find whatever your role is in it, right? And I'll, like, even like, you know, I so that like, like, let's say there is some kind of some trauma and some kind of like tendency, right? Like, who the fuck wants to be told when they have gone through, let's say, like, three horrible things that all, you know, like, like what was your role in it? You know, fuck that. Like, no, these things happen to me. But oftentimes, like, it's, it's more about, like, looking at that and saying, for example, okay, what did I, you know, what boundaries did I not make, right? What level of, of self-love did I give myself? Um, but sometimes, you know, sometimes shit just fucking happens and it's like, what can you do about it? Yeah. But that's, that's one thing. And, um, you know, what can happen here is that it, like, like it can make someone very, very firm and it can irritate other people, like very, like super independent, headstrong. Um, and because it's Aries Mars, it can be very like, a, like boom, boom, boom. Like someone says something, Scorpion Moon gets ticked off. Because remember, I told you, Scorpion Moon, it's that really strong unconscious underpinnings. Gets ticked off, and boom, it just reacts. That's why mindfulness, once again, to be able to take the trigger. Like, example, my brother uh, said something very annoying to me last night over text. Um, I felt this rage. I just didn't answer, you know, even though, like, I could have said something that that really would have been like, then I would have felt bad, you know? So I just didn't respond and I'm just not gonna respond, you know? Even though it's something like small on the surface, it's a it's a deeper issue like beneath that, right? So it's just an example, right, of like, of that. Um, Because when, you, when, when you're at that point where you're not fighting back <laughs> and you're not reciprocating, that's when, you know, you really gain the power, right? Because if someone is just 
like fighting back at every chance, then people know I can get this person easily. But yeah, boundaries are super imp important and finding, you know, a, a channel for that real fighting spirit, that real intense energy. Um, another thing about your Aries energy is that, you know, your Aries Mercury too, right? That's, that's the, your way of speaking. Like, like, so in thinking it can be very, very boom, 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 you know, very assertive and very fast and, 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 um, and uh, with, with a lot of fire sometimes, uh, people don't always realize like how much, like um, how much more intense they are than other people. And they can almost overpower people when they're just being themselves. So it's like, I think that's probably why the can how the cancer rising helps you. But I think like with your North Node journey, a lot of it is around seeing, under, understanding other people's perspectives and, and understanding like, what it's like to walk a mile in other people's shoes. And that is like one of the best conduits to compassion and oneness, right? And that can come through communicating with lots of different people and, and just, or even just learning a lot. It's like, you're meant to be the journalist, the journalist that collects all the data. Uh, Cause perhaps in past lives, there's, there's a tendency to kind of just believe, not like in a conditioned way, right? But just have your higher philosophies, but not test them out. So the lower mind, the higher mind is the idea of like, the lower mind is the journalist, right? Or the data collector that has to go and do all the groundwork, you know, go on the street, interview the people. And then the Sagittarius, right? The, the higher mind is <clears throat> what connects it all and creates the guiding life philosophies. But if there's an imbalance in both, and for example, the person isn't going and collecting the data, um, whatever metaphoric way that means to you, <clears throat> then, you know, like, you know, because we're always updating, we're always meant to be updating our worldviews, right? So it, things can be off in that sense. Um, okay, so yeah, like what, what I was saying about Aries is that like, yeah, so people, some, some, sometimes, sometimes people with, the, with Aries and with these aspects, they don't realize the impact they have on others, that fieriness, so it's important to kind of see that. Because um, like your natural strength can, can, can really just, yeah, it's, it's really, once again, once, it's all about challenging. And, you know, but there's a, an amazing ability to, to transmute and transform this powerful energy. Pluto, once again, it's like this dense ball of energy that once you get it working for you, it's the, like this intensity, this obsession that you can like put into anything you want and just go in like, but a lot of times people with this, they don't understand the power that they have, you know? They don't always understand it. Um, and that also is with the air, you know, because sometimes the lack of air, it can be difficult to see yourself correctly and see how you are compared to others truly, right? Um, so, so yeah, being able to combine the strength, right, of Mars, um, with the like like the sing like the determination and single minus of Pluto, it's like how can you find ways to put those two together, right? And it all comes back to how you that deep inner investigation into your desires, right? Um and the mindfulness and that self-awareness, that daily self-awareness. It's all through trial and error and hard work. So that's why um you know, it's just like useless to to get down on, on yourself um, for anything, any way, you, anything you've done or anything. You know, it's just about excusing yourself or anything like that, right? Because a lot of times with the Mars, Mars Pluto stuff, like with Aries is so assertive, you know? So like, just imagine like just very basic Aries Scorpio, like Scorpio moon can get very, like so sensitive and little things can throw it off and it can just react like a, ah, like a scorpion, you know, and sting. And then you know, the Aries is, is, is just, it can be very reactive. So it's like how to slow that down. It's also a very sexual energy. Um, so usually like people with this, they give up like a, you know, a certain sexual magnetism um, that a lot of times they use to their advantage, not like in a weird way, just like, in, you know, fuck, I would, I would. <laughs> and, um, you know, once again, Another important thing is just to not use like the the kind of sub subversive tactics, um, kind of like 
abuse of power that can come with with this uh it's like it's like having like a strong spiritual moral code right like that karmic responsibility which is also the 12th house north node right understanding how you everything you do plays into the wholeness of all that is and just so you know like a lot of like you know very successful and famous people have this right because it you know it pushes people to like really feel like they have to fight to get ahead and uh you know when they channel it correctly it's, it's amazing mm -hmm. so mars um so yeah mars mars like i said it, it it's it's aspected in a way um that can be you know it, it can definitely be used in a good way <clears throat> but the the one the opposition with with um with saturn which is not as close but yeah <clears throat> um it yeah like I, I that's the one i already talked about where where it's like you know you, you feel like um taking a few steps forward and getting pushed back by the universe um hmm. i mean it really tests your character around like how much you can persevere right and it's like all about finding like a disciplined way to channel that energy and not allowing like the emotions to run away with you right kind of it's a very similar thing to what i'm saying right and it's all it's really about patience too which can be very hard for aries people because it can it can be very impatient so it's really it teaches you lots of patience um especially with your progress in life right and um <clears throat> You know, it, it's really like, you know, another thing about your North Node, your, your like kind of current journey is like trusting that like what's, you know, like you're get, like it's the it's the journey, not the destination kind of and just that you're going to get, you know, like what's coming for you. It's coming, you know, but there is that real test of patience and belief and you're going to be tested in your lifetime around that. Um, so th it, there's a lot of hard work that it takes to master this Mars opposite Saturn. Um, you know, really having to fight hard to get what you want out of life, right? Um, so, yeah. A lot of times the opposition, it's like feeling like you're, what you want and desire the most, it's like blocked by, by, by other people in some way. Oftentimes it's very faded karmic events that block that path. And obviously, you know, anger is that first <clears throat> thing that can steep in. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really, really teaches one to, um, and it can be a karmic, this can be something karmic associated with, with anger. Right. So I think like with the Charlie, this the, the nodes square in mid, mid heaven, I think like, it's it's about like that whole ego versus soul battle playing out in career, right? But yeah, uh, besides that, like so, people with with this can like hold on to anger for a long time too, and that's a, a very Scorpio moon thing. So it's like learning to really like thinking about your energetic closet and like how you need to like like and like clean it out, you know, like really thinking like what's in my energetic closet, um, because the amount of energy of our 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 energy bandwidth we use is a lot, you know, when we, when we hold stuff in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, some, some people just are like bullied when they're younger, have, you know, like I said, like a physical abuse, psychological abuse, even something sexual, like it's, you know, it's just, and it can, it can lead to a depression of feeling like I'm just the universe hates me, you know, but it's really important to not let that negativity take hold. Uh, because there can be self abuse with that, and like it's like this 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 huge life purpose is working on the self esteem, right? And and really like once again physical exercise, don't porn, and just that anything that helps you keep that positive attitude, Neptune in the tick, you know, keeping like the daily like like having compassion, spirituality in your daily life, whether it's having a meditation, you're you know 
each day, meditating on the energy of love. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, like <clears throat> I would be, well, nothing surprises me, but if you told me that you were like a really good athlete or that, you know, like that was like a big part of life, like I wouldn't be surprised at all with all this energy. But then I also wouldn't be surprised if, you know, it was the opposite because I've seen a lot of people with a bunch of Aries who, you know, smoke a lot, you know, the green stuff. Um, because sometimes that energy is just too much for them and they're just like, it, it helps them kind of ease it off. Um, but yeah, any like I think the martial arts would be like, if I was like, you have to do something, you like, really just tell me to do one thing and I'll follow it. I would say, find a martial art that you just self discipline, but also there's like a spiritual kind of like, you know, aspect to it. Um, and it really like gets out the negative energy too. Um, and yeah, definitely issues with the authority figures when young, with that one for sure. I mean, like, I would be very surprised if not. Um, let's go back. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, super interesting. So, yeah, uh, with love, you know, moon opposite Venus. So, I mean, how, how close is that one? Eight, two. That's like, Couple between what you need, right, and um, the needs of 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 other people, right. Um, they can also so yeah, just like finding like that that balance, um, which can be really difficult um, in relationships of like giving yourself what you need and then giving the partner what they need. But your Venus is in Taurus, so. Um, people with Venus and Taurus, they usually are good looking. They usually, you know, have this kind of attractive energy. And, you know, like it's like reliability is super important. They really value like consistency in relationships. And then you have your Juno in in Pisces. Well, so um, yeah, it's more slow and steady with relationships. And a Scorpio moon, big time slow and steady because Scorpio moon, it's not going to trust someone easy. And that's smart, you know. They, 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 they really, they, they prefer someone to really prove themselves before just trusting them blindly, right? So yeah, it's really like that person needs to prove themselves. It's like, like it's about like building the foundations of the building, the metaphoric building of the relationship, right? And Venus and Taurus, they love, you know, sensuality, um, you know, any, it's very good for money to, um, you know, 11th house, you could actually be someone that makes money through your associations with people. Um, and, you know, very reliable finances typically. And it's just like, you know, Venus and Taurus, like it's a great placement for Venus, you know, loves nature, loves, loves, you know, like closeness, like touch and smell and, and just like beauty and the nicer things in life, you know, Venus and Taurus you can read all about it. Like it's, it's a great placement. Um, I think Venus and Taurus do love the right way. I think like typically, right. And yeah. So, um, of course, like the moon and Scorpio person, like in love, like they need to feel like they can, once you know, the, 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 the conjunction that has, they can like let all their intensity out um, and that the person, you know, is able to kind of be, hold space for them to transform and um, where they can really, you know, once again, like have the inner child and be themselves, right? Because you have this fire energy too. And it's really important to be able, like I said before, like it, kind of exactly what I said earlier, right? About like being able to like to still be very serious when needed, but also fun when needed. Um. So, <clears throat> yeah, Juno represents like your ideal mate. In Pisces, we're talking here about um, ninth house Pisces, someone who you know adds to your to to your kind of like worldview. Right, like it has like a positive contribution to your worldview and to your understanding of higher truth. So, like an intellectual connection, and then Pisces, you know, it's it's really wanting someone where there's like a deep spiritual bond, like a soulmate type energy, and romance and um, kind of a dreaminess to the relationship too, and um, you know, probably, you know, yeah, like really um, kind of like, yeah, very 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 dreamy kind of energy um so 
also ninth house could be someone from another country or it could be someone who you enjoy you know traveling the world with and learning different philosophies with and you know yeah just really wanting that like to feel like at one like through your through your relationship through your love really feel at one with all that is so <clears throat> some interesting things let's see okay so also like with the sun and mercury combust like conjunction it's like sometimes people that can identify too much with their minds um and it's important to like create that distance with like so it could be through meditation to create that distance um from the mind and and um also really important not to get stuck in dogmatism um uh, you know getting stuck in like uh you know just it's just really important to like be able once again to be able to see other people's points of view and to have like a fair exchange of your communication and listening you know sometimes people with a lot of fire struggle with that hmm. But usually, you know, creates effective communicators, right? Um, so, and usually, like, really enjoying intellectual stimulation, wants to learn a lot, and, um, you know, carries, uh, you know, and also, like, a 10th house Mercury could be someone who, you know, is able to communicate really well or have a, a career where communication is important. And then, you know, really want to, like, share a lot of their thoughts and ideas and their profession and a very independent thinker, you know? Um, and intuitive also so that's the attempt is really nice um because it just makes someone very dedicated to their career like hard working disciplined sometimes too perfectionist though um but like you know your, your whole ten thousand areas is like very entrepreneurial you know um so it's about you know like one thing is like it's important to, to learn to like work well with other people um, but at the same time, you might be someone who's, um, you know, meant to work better on your own, um, and meant to be a leader of people, right? And Eris on your Mercury also, it just you know, speaks to like this very volcanic energy, um, that can go be with your communication. So it goes once again to that whole idea of, you know, the more relaxed you can be, the more mindful you can be, um, uh, cause there can maybe there, there can sometimes be like a difficulty with that with the filter. So you wrote, you know, that you're feeling delayed, stuck. Um, funny how I, I didn't even read the part about motherhood, and I just saw in there that like, um, you know, it, it is a very important part of your life, and like a vertex in the fifth could also be, you know, through your children that you really experience. Um, a lot of uh like the, like it opens up the doorway to higher this doorway to higher awareness and i already i swear i did not see the part about the mother but i i think i said earlier like i'm not sure if you have kids I'm pretty sure right but like yeah with the saturn and moon it's like people that can yeah they, it, they they can grow a lot emotionally through the children it's beautiful placement for being like a very responsible mother and a lot of times with with the pluto energy too it's like all the healing that you've done um you know passing it down the bloodline and imagine if you're imagine if there's 30 generations or 100 generations in your bloodline that kept going on the same trauma and never healed it and then imagine that you even if it's not pretty or perfect you healed it and then now you're passing out to your kids that's amazing but yeah career i think it's just like really um like it's 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 probably meant to like um you know switch up like uh like a lot of times with that, like, come on, your midheaven is my son. So maybe it's like, you know, we'll see if there's any, you know, um, asteroids or anything, but like, it could be very linked to compassion, you know, and in helping people. And you have Ceres in, in Aquarius in the eight. So um, that just makes you feel very nourished when you experience like the depths, uh, like think of psychology, deep and intense emotions, um, metaphysical, anything metaphysical, and um you know like even it could be like caring for dying people right like or you know anything that gets you deep into those 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 realms of, of metaphysics and or uh you know human psyche and you know so Sirius and Aquarius also has implications for love and just in general you feel very nurtured when you 
are given independence and given a sense of like where, where, where people like encourage you to encourage you to keep your sense of um individuality and you know also where you're able to be around people who are able to be their authentic selves and be eccentric and just be honest you know and then you're able to also be really good at giving that to other people giving people that freedom even though like scorpio moons like the whole thing is like oh scorpio moons are possessive okay they can be doesn't mean they have to. really scorpio is intimate and scorpio is about transformation so no like scorpios are like one scorpio the next it's not gonna be the same and i think i was saying earlier i didn't finish my sentence um about like the scorpio men versus women like, i i i guess i kind of talked about like how it's because the emotions are so intense a lot of men just keep it in bottle it up and then it turns into that yeah i actually did finish that didn't i but yeah women like or you know females when they're younger they're able to like the scorpio moons they're able to talk about these things and then they can transform them okay so palace is in seventh um that's really good for being a counselor or like anything that like like really really good at understanding how uh, like so it's interesting because like we talked about this idea of like understanding other like it's good for like understanding like for example like a, a family therapist or something would, would, would be really good there um but it can make it like also difficult to sharing your feelings with intimate partners. Um, but it can give someone like lots of wisdom and the way people like relate to each other, which is like, that's like how the palace of house is. But then when you combine it with everything else I said, um, I think that it's definitely, you know, an energy that is trying, you know, that you're trying to build up. So, you know, with career, you know, I think it's the best thing is something that, that helps that helps you, 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 you know, like, I think that if it was something in the healing profession, it'd be like the best thing. And I think it'd be, it'd, it'd be like a triple return because you would heal you, you're, you're able to help others. And just like, it's like that outlet too. There's just so much good. Um, yeah. And Palace and, and Capricorn is very good for like, uh, being able to like, you know, make plans and kind of like structure your thoughts and, and it gives good logic. So, okay, so you're part of Fortune, Black and Lilith are in Aquarius, then you sound anything. Oh, yeah, also with, like, Chiron, you know, your pain, where where the healing needs to be done, it can be around, like, the body, lack of self-worth, like, and also, like, not feeling beautiful. Sometimes people with that, they try to, like, get too many, like, money, possessions, money, all that. Um, and, they like, it's, it's about, like, learning to trust your body. So, like, I think yoga of some sort could be very good, like, anything physical, right? Um, uh but yeah sometimes people with that they don't feel like like that self-esteem and um it's just things that they can do to, to really feel good um but you know there's also like values chiron taurus is like about crisis of values so um that comes from that spiritual relationship with the self and uh also chiron 11th house there could be pain in friend groups or just in groups in general um that's another thing, another aspect of that. So that's something that, you know, can be overcome by who you decide to be friends with. So, so yeah, okay. Um, so Black Moon Lilith and Aquarius um, in the A's is interesting because that's kind of like how you defeat yourself. And that also speaks to like how friendships can, there can be some issues with friendships in this lifetime. Um, you know, maybe like friends not living up to your expectations, um, feel like you can't count on them, or they don't listen, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, uh, like sometimes people with that, like, you know, they want to be, you know, connected with good friends and all that, but they can feel rejected and believe that it's others who are rejecting them. But sometimes they're the ones who are like, um, you know, very fixed in their ideas and trying to like impose their thoughts on other people, which is something that as a South node in Sag is very important to not do, right? Because as you're moving towards Gemini, it's that openness and, and letting people kind of um, explain, you know, what their worldviews are, right? And like any, sometimes with that, any sign of disagreement can be, be, be viewed as like a lack of support and like, um, so 
it's, it's all about like learning to accept the differences in people um and hold it like a lot you know allowing people to hold different opinions and just ask questions you know like like oh so how do you feel that way you know th this is what i do right if it's someone i disagree with because i have sag energy you know i'm sag moon um I'll, I'll be like okay explain that to me and i won't actually give my opinion if it's like someone who's like really just like trying to piss me off but i'll just be like i'm just curious just explain why you feel this way i'll be like okay so you feel this and this and this you can even use socratic questioning and Stuff like that if you really want to push them into a corner <laughs> and use their own words against them. So you basically are saying that this and this and this and this and you know add up. Um yeah. Um So I think Black Moon in the Eighth House can make someone like attract the darker people, darker sides of of of, of society, of life into the, their lives. Um, you know, whether it's the right, wrong kind of people in relationships. Um, and it, it ends up being like a projection. This is a very Pluto thing, right? Plutonian thing. So it's like until, until one with you know, Pluto in their chart faces their own darkness, they might attract someone who mimics it um then you're part of fortunes in aquarius in the eighth so that is um you know based, basically speaking to like when you make these massive scorpio moon transformations that is like your flow state that's you at your best and you have like a, a great talent for that and um it's all about you know the need to surrender your ego right and and really combine with other people um uh, incorporate other people's values like really like you know be very open-minded too. In Aquarius, it's just about how for you, when you are living this life, that's very, you know, true to you, true to your own individuality. It gives you that freedom, and that joy that comes from freedom for you is just amazing. And, and the Aries is all about freedom too, right? So also just being a non-conformist. Yeah. Here. That's why it's every time. Every time. Yeah, I would definitely, um, if you're interested, book the, like for the, you know, I think you have the follow up. I haven't taken a look, but um, what most people do is they, like, they add the um, current astrology. Did I already tell you about this or was that the last reading? I can't remember. But yeah, basically three hours, it, the, the follow up's one hour. Um, and that one becomes, um, it becomes three hours and it's not like a long wait. Like we said, you know, after you take this in, we can schedule it. I have to email my new email because um, I've just given up on my DMs. So it's uh, the, I just made it, jessiness and astrology at gmail.com. And um, yeah, so I give you $60 off. Um, so it would, instead of 350, it would be, um, if you're interested, a pressure, obviously. 
maybe 290 and um, I just give you a code. And yeah, we just set that up and it's first hour and you already have the follow-up where we just talk about comparing your lived experience, um, you know, with everything I said today. And then we seamlessly move into your current astrology. I go over everything, solar return, transits, um, progression, like so many things like the solar arc, house and grass, more, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. Okay, let's see what stars. What's this? The serious. Ooh, you have a big time money star rising. Nice. Good job. And you have Cassandra. So I don't know so much about Cassandra, um, but I know it's it's linked to beauty, and it's close to your ascendant. That's all I know about it. I can look it up real quick. It's not one I typically work with. Or that I, I work with. I just added it recently. Uranus and Jupiter. Okay. So yeah, Sirius on the Ascendant, that is like a wealth star. So good job. Uh, it's very good for money. Um, very ambitious. The U.S., you know, obviously, found, everything's found by astrology. So the U.S. chose its birth. It's Fourth of July birthday. That's unserious. Wonder why. Um, so you know, it just, it just, it's you know, like people who have it. Michael Jordan, Albert Einstein. Those are two people who have that. Mark Wahlberg, Robert De Niro. So. Billy Joel, Steven Spielberg, and you're born during the day. So very, it says it's cap capable, commanding, valiant, energetic, active, fearless, submissive, greedy, hard, what? Uh, military leader, which just means like someone who's just a, you know, a leader, glorious. Okay. And the people with that are Jordan Einstein, Wahlberg and Billy Joel, so all the good ones. And it's way better to have that. If you, if you were born at night, and you had you had that. It would not be good. So good job, good job. Um. So let's see with uh, Vegas two forty. So is there gonna be, is that not gonna be like any, it's not gonna be that powerful too. Yeah, so that's it's another one that's, that's really good for 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 um for resources too. And you have one of the royal stars in Taurus, but I'm not sure what it's gonna do with um Uranus. Abnormal and extreme ideas. Anarchist. <laughs> oh, these are funny sometimes. Um Disharmony with relatives, more than one marriage. Okay. I'm waiting for my freaking book to get here about the fixed stars because goddamn. And drink chamomile tea, it says. And then with Jupiter, it says great religious zeal. Um very good for spirituality, benefits to relatives, mental alertness, strategic ability, and courage to make daredevils. Yeah, so that like empires is like the badass king of the underworld, like queen of the underworld. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Is that everything I was looking for? Oh, yeah, no, no, I wanted to look at it. So, yeah, let me know on that email, please um about uh you know struggle us uh, that's uh if you want to add the uh the current or just stick to the follow-up and then we can schedule on there so cassandra is about divination insight and prophecy the areas in which we are not heard as children 
in area issues in which we are right and we know it ourselves yet no one else sees it. That's exactly what I was telling you about. It's so interesting. In addition, it, it, it reveals issues in which we are called called to follow our instinct. So that that's so crazy, right? Like um, and people around us trying to make us doubt our intuition. So okay, here it is. Um, so this is a yeah, like I said, a person who, who can have a nice appearance. It's Cassandra had in Greek mythology, and at the same time have strong intuition, divination skills. Nice. The person probably received strong telepathic and transcendental messages during childhood, which frightened them. I feel like that happened. Am I right? Thus, this particular person, I don't actually know, um, developing strong defenses may have been unaware of the aforementioned messages coming from the collective unconscious and not believe what they saw or heard. So what a beautiful way to end because those are 12 past North Node states. You know, you are someone who is meant to get in connection with, in, you know, Gemini, North Node, speaking, uh, both house, the collective unconscious. So I'll leave it there. Thank you so much. I uh, hope you enjoyed. And let me know, let me know, let me know. Ciao.